What's up YouTube? This is Demkeys and today I'm gonna teach you how to create a zero gravity area. So let's begin. First of all, disable the main camera in the scene. We won't be needing that. Also, move your game tab down here so that the scene view is shown at all times. Next, click game object, 3D object, quad. Remove the mesh collider from the quad. Add a box collider 2D instead. Make a duplicate of the quad and rename the duplicate to ground. Stretch it out so that our player can use this as ground. Make another duplicate of the quad and rename that to zero gravity area. Change the scale to 40 on X and Y and reposition it so that it is right at the edge of our ground. It can overlap, that's not an issue. Next, add a tag, call it zero gravity and assign that tag to our zero gravity area. Next, add a directional light, click game object, light, directional light and move it a little lower so that the gizmo is not obstructing our view. Next, select the first quad and rename it to player. Also add a rigid body 2D component to it. Next, in the project panel, create two materials. One is player material and the other should be zero gravity material. Change both of their colors so that you can distinguish between them. And now apply the player material to the player game object and the zero gravity material to the zero gravity area object. Select the ground and zero gravity area and change their position on the z-axis to zero. And then select the player and change its position on the z-axis to negative one. And I forgot to mention this earlier, select the zero gravity area and under box collider 2D check is trigger. Finally, select the player and add a script, call it player move script 06 and open it up in mono develop. All right, so we're gonna start by creating the variables. First of all, public float zero gravity move force, public float normal move force, private float move force, private rigid body 2D R body 2D, public float jump force, public bool in zero gravity zone, private float original gravity scale and public string zero gravity tag next in the start method our body 2d equals get component rigid body 2d original gravity scale equals our body 2d dot gravity scale next void on trigger enter 2d it takes a parameter of collider 2d within the function type if call dot game object dot tag is equal to zero gravity tag then in gravity zone equals true now make a copy of this function and paste it here and rename the second one to on trigger exit now in this case if call.gameObject.tag is equal to zero gravity tag, we want in gravity zone to be set to false. Next, void fixed update. Float h equals input.getAxis raw. We want to get the horizontal axis multiplied by move force. Next, float v. Now here I'm going to be using a conditional operator. Let me finish typing down this line, then I'll explain what it means. In gravity zone, input.getAxis raw. We want the vertical axis multiplied by move force, else zero f. All right, so this right here is a conditional operator. This is the same as writing an if else statement. So basically if in zero gravity zone is true, then the value of V will be whatever this evaluates to. Else it will be zero F. Finally, our body 2D dot add force, new vector two, H on X and V on Y. Then in the update method, move force. Again, we're going to be using the conditional operator in gravity zone. Then move force should be zero gravity move force. Else it should be normal move force. Our body 2D dot gravity scale. Again, conditional operator operator if in gravity zone then gravity scale should be 0 f else it should be the original gravity scale which we are setting in the start method next if input dot get key down key code dot space and not in zero gravity zone then our body 2d dot add force vector 2 dot up multiplied by jump force all right now real quick let's go over the code and see what's happening first of all in the start method we are adding a reference and setting the value of original gravity scale to whatever the rigid body 2d's original gravity scale is next Next, on trigger enter 2D. Now, on trigger enter 2D will be called when our player enters a trigger. And since our zero gravity area objects box collider 2D is a trigger, when the player enters that trigger, on trigger enter 2D will be called. Next, we will check if call.gameObject.tag is zero gravity tag. We will be setting the value for zero gravity tag from the inspector. Then, in zero gravity zone should be true because our player has entered the zero gravity area. Next, you have on trigger exit 2D, which is the opposite of on trigger enter 2D. So, this will be called when the player exits exits the trigger and again we are checking the tag of the game object whose trigger the player has exited from and if it is equal to our zero gravity tag that means the player has exited the zero gravity zone in which case we need to set in zero gravity zone to false next in fixed update we are getting input from the player we are checking the value on the horizontal axis and multiplying it by move force and then setting that value to h and we are using a conditional operator to set the value of v i already 
explained this to you earlier, so I'm not going to go over it again. And finally, we are using our body 2 force to move the player. Now, the reason why we would want to set V to zero if in zero gravity zone is false is because when the player is not in the zero gravity zone, he is being controlled by gravity. So we don't want the player to be able to press the up and down keys. As far as jumping is concerned, we are handling that in the update method. Next, the update method. Again, we are using the conditional operator. So if in zero gravity zone is true, then the value of move force will be zero gravity move force else it will be normal move force next again we are using a conditional operator so if in zero gravity zone is true then the gravity scale should be zero else it should be the original gravity scale which we are setting in the start method and finally we are checking if the player has pressed the space key and if in zero gravity zone is set to false then we allow the player to jump the reason why we check if in zero gravity zone is false is because we don't want to allow the player to jump when he's in the zero gravity zone hit save go back to unity and before playing the game we are going to set the values for our variables first of all you have zero gravity move force that should be 20 normal move force should be 80 jump force should be 1800 you don't need to set the value for in zero gravity zone because that will be set by the script i've kept it public just so you can see the value changing and finally zero gravity tag that is zero gravity make sure you get the spelling right otherwise it won't work also set the gravity scale to eight now play the game and as you can see our player has regular movement the player is also able to jump and when the player jumps into the zero gravity zone he's now floating around because he's not being affected by gravity and you can also see in gravity zone is set to true now when the player exits the gravity zone he is now being affected by gravity and you can also see in zero gravity zone is set to false. Now, if you would like to have more control over the player's movement in the gravity zone, you can do that by adjusting the linear drag and the angular drag. Drag is basically the tendency of an object to slow down due to friction with the air or water that surrounds it. In this case, linear drag applies drag to the positional movement of the object and angular drag applies drag to the rotational movement of the object. Go back to the script. Let's add some more variables. First of all, public float rotation force. Next private float original linear drag public float zero gravity linear drag then just copy and paste these two lines and change the names to original angular drag and zero gravity angular drag then in the start method original linear drag equals our body 2d dot drag and original angular drag equals our body 2d dot angular drag then in the update method our body 2d dot drag equals again we are using the conditional operator so if in zero gravity zone then zero gravity linear drag else original Original linear drag also for angular drag if in zero gravity zone then use zero gravity angular drag else use original angular drag finally where we are checking if the player has pressed the space key under the add force line type our body 2d dot add torque negative rotation force hit save go back to unity set rotation force to 40 set zero gravity linear drag to 1 and zero gravity angular drag to 0 0.5 just so you know the initial linear drag is 0 as you can see over here and the initial angular drag is 0 0.05 not 0 0.5 hit play as you can see the player has regular movement outside the zero gravity zone and when you enter the zero gravity zone the positional and rotational movement slows down over time just a quick tip if your player exits the zero gravity zone and falls to the ground from a great height then there are chances that the player might go right through the ground if that does happen change the rigid body 2d's collision detection mode from discrete to continuous and then it will be fine so yeah that's it so i hope this tutorial was helpful if you would like to watch more tutorials you can click in the top left corner of the screen and in the top right is a link to my music channel where i post music that i make in my free time in the bottom left corner you have a pre preview for a small game that I made. The links for the project and the game build are in the description down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Leave your comments below and I'll see you guys next time.